Hey guys, Joe Pye here at Advanced Innovations. Welcome back to the shop. Today I'm going to show you a couple of tricks for reducing chatter on a lathe when you need a large undercut in a part or a form tool and the material is difficult and chatter is inevitable. One of the things I like to say is if you got chatter, something's the matter. And that's a fact. Either the tool's jumping around or the part's jumping around or both or the part's jumping around and the way you hold it. And naturally, when you have a large form tool contact on a part, I'll show you a trick for reducing the potential for chatter on that as well. One of the things that you can do, especially with a parting tool, I know a lot of you guys probably, you'll be parting a piece of material and all of a sudden, rah, it's making all kinds of noise. And when you try to get past that noise, no luck, right? Well, turn the tool upside down and run the machine in reverse for a couple of revs and dust off the high sides of that chatter and then you can proceed however you want to but inverting your tool and running the machine in reverse across the chatter is a good way to get rid of it. I'm going to show you a couple of tricks on 316 stainless steel. It's a one inch diameter. I'm going to do it in a collet. I'm going to put in a large undercut. I'm going to put in a large contact form tool undercut and I'm just going to show you a couple of different ways to grind your tools to have more success and reduce chatter potential when you need to do it. I'm going to use high speed steel tools and 316, 316L stainless just so nobody says hey you cheated it was plastic or aluminum and uh, there is no chatter. Anyway let's take a walk out to the lathe, let's pop some tools in there, I'll show you some different uh, feeds, tricks, techniques and grinds for your tools and get to it. Okay guys this is the first tool I'm going to demonstrate. Actually I'm not going to use this one, I am going to show you the sister tool to it and that would be the one with the center knocked out. If you need to sweep a large undercut in your part with a tool like this, well after you've plunged it the center is really not doing anything. You're cutting on the sides and you're going to get all of your noise with the large surface contact you have in the front. By relieving the front of your tool out and feeding this in in a zigzag pattern you can sweep back and forth and reduce the overall surface contact of this tool considerably. And you can see this guy has taken some heat. So we're going to load this up in the machine. We're going to plunge it down into a piece of 316 stainless. And I'm going to show you how well this actually works and how fast that material can come out of there. It's just one of the techniques I'll show you. Stay tuned. Alright guys, for sake of this first part of this demonstration, I am using the relieved center form tool with the small rounds on either side. And when you line your tool up initially, I'm still messing with the camera here. When you line your tool up initially, make sure that the relief in the middle, uh, when it does yield the two points on either side of the tool, when the tool makes its initial contact with the material, that it tracks lines at the same time, or that would indicate that the tool is not going to leave a straight undercut, or it's going to leave a step in your undercut. And I'll show you what I mean here in a second. I'm going to try to take this down to at least half of its original diameter and twice the width of the tool and I want to see how fast I can do that. This is not a very friendly material or width of tool normally and we'll see what kind of results we get. Check it out. This is a half inch wide high speed steel tool. One inch diameter, 316, I believe it's 316. Yep, 316. I'm going to start doing this at 320 RPM and I'm going to feed this by hand. I am moving the carriage back and forth with one hand while I'm feeding the tool in with the other. First thing we want to see is two lines show up on the OD of this part with the initial cut. Now if this tool is biased a little to the left, Two thou, three thou before it touches. For sake of this demonstration, I'm going to leave it there. Let's see what happens. You can see how the relief in the center of the tool results in a protrusion that's not even being cut yet. 
Now when you grind your tool, make sure the relief that you grind on your tool will cut as well. You'll see the back side, or what I call the back side, the right hand side of the tool is going to erase the lump in the center as the carriage travels to my left. I'm going to ramp it in a little bit more for the return trip. back again. Now if you tried to do this with a tool that was not relieved in the center, this material would be jumping all over the place and the noise would just be really unbearable. time that took, that's a relatively considerable undercut with the size of tool that I am using. I'm going to go a little bit further so we can make a flat bottom relief. Flatten the bottom of that cut right out. Mismatch goes away. Now you're back turning with the opposite side of the tool. Let's go deeper. Still 320 RPM. As the diameter gets smaller, you can increase the RPM to keep the surface footage correct. A little bit of a plunge here, clean it up. That is the relieved center tool. Sweeping it back and forth as you plunge, ramp it in, cut, ramp it in, cut. Make sure that whatever the relief size you have in the center, the tool can overlap so you do not have a protrusion in the center. You want even contact initially because probably one side of this I would say is three or four thou bigger than the other side from the initial scratches we left on the OD. That would, that's a pretty fair statement. All right, show you another way. I'll move this out a little bit. Another very reliable way to do that, use a parting tool. Make sure the extension of your parting tool isn't too far out. Definitely you want it far out enough to reach the bottom of your undercut. We're still going to stay at 320 RPM. Chop a bunch of material out.
avoid deflection of the parting tool for the remaining cuts, don't take just a portion of material off. Move at least the width of your parting tool over and then some. It is okay to leave a rib. And that's exactly what I'm going to do. You'll see it sh shape up. I'll do that two or three times and then I'll come back with the wider form tool and I'll knock the ribs off. Still high speed steel tool, parting tool. Still hand feeding it. And you can see that the resulting rib is wider than the tool. Let's see what happens. It sounded like we might have lost the edge on that tool. Nope, still good. That's a little bit hot, huh? Yeah. Now I could continue that indefinitely, but by putting the relief cuts in the part, you've effectively reduced the load on the tool. The tool that's coming next, that is. I'm going to put this tool back in here. This is the tool that's got a full surface bite, no relief to it. And I am going to set this up as quick as I can and knock those ribs off for sake of demonstration I'm not worried about the height I'm just going to show you that the reduced load is much better results It's trying to chatter because of the amount of surface contact we have at the face. Still a relatively large, successful undercut with high speed steel tooling, a 316 stainless diameter. I'm going to show you the inverted technique. I'm turning this tool over. I know I'm going to get a lot of comments on whether or not this is good for the machine, but I think there's so much mass on a normal engine lathe that the tool's going to snap off long before you're going to tear your machine apart. I've been doing this for years and never damaged a machine. I have to say it's not possible, it's just never happened. Still 320 RPM, the tool is approximately a half an inch wide. Machine in reverse.
Now stainless does like to work hard, so if it starts to chatter, don't be afraid to give it just a little bit more pressure to see if you can get under that chatter and start that cut. If the tool is dragging, then it's going too slow, and all it's going to do is work hard in your piece and you're not going to have any success. But there you go. Half inch wide tool, 316 stainless, high speed steel. This is WD-40 I'm using as a lubricant in case anybody wondering what all the smoke's about. And I'm about winded from exhaling and blowing that smoke out of the way because I don't like sniffing that stuff. Large surface contact inverted form tool works very well. Parting tool done with several bites to relieve it out and then take the majority out or the relieved center tool. Problem solved. That's all I got. All right, guys. Well, I hope that you enjoyed that demonstration. That particular relieved center uh, form tool has worked very well for me over the years. It does reduce the initial contact, and by sweeping back and forth, you can keep that contact to a minimum. Definitely try it with the material that you're doing with the rigidity of your machine. Results may vary, so experiment with it and figure out exactly where you want to be when you're digging in. But it's a two-handed operation. Keep everything moving, and the chatter will probably uh, not show up. Uh, the inverted form tool works very well. Be extra careful if you have a screw-on chuck. I know a lot of you guys have screw-on chucks on your machines. Uh, heavy load on a screw-on chuck is not a good idea. So if you, unless you have a cam chuck or a key chuck, I would not suggest it. Anyway, when you do have a large body undercut in your part, there's no reason you can't do the large section of the undercut with one tool and do the internal rounds on the sides of the undercut if it's on the print do it with a second tool. There's no reason to have more surface contact than you absolutely need, right? So why bother? Anyway, I hope you got something out of that. I enjoyed showing it to you. Until next time, Joe Pizinski, Advanced Innovations, Austin, Texas.